All right, welcome everyone. I'm at Three Moonshell in Crystal Cove, Newport Coast, California. Beautiful sunny day, as you can see. What we're gonna show you today is how, one way to look at a property that we can point out how to create value. So value creation, what does that mean? Stay tuned. All right, so we're, we're Three Moonshell. We always have clients that are looking for value plays, right? Either there's like obviously deal hunters, but I don't really classify what I'm talking about as a deal hunter. This is a value opportunity hunter, if you yeah. will, right? <laughs> Opportunist, let's walk. Well, I think it's like, I think what you're saying is there's a house here that has the ability to have some value added on at a price point that's low and not heavy lifting, so it's not gonna be strenuous on time, or be a massive one, two year project, and it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be heavy on the wallet either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so big ROI, um, like you said, not, well, I mean, so, so, it's so, definitely so, gonna so be- Time out. But, so obviously you got this really nice private motor court gate, which is pretty unique. Not every home has that. Sure. We're in a semi-custom lot, which the lots remind me, it's 22,006, almost 22,007. Yeah, just shy of So the lot itself, just what we're working with here, gives an opportunity for someone to add all the square footage on because some homes are already maxed out. You go, the house we just saw off market right now down the street, it was a 5,500 square foot house on a 10, 11,000 square foot lot-ish. Yeah. They're not gonna be a lot, you're not gonna be able to get a yeah. lot more square footage, right? Well, great point. And actually, I mean, if you wanna get technical, our client, you know, con was considering tearing it down because the, there's virtually no restrictions. Yeah, and you're, you're saying this client this, was considering, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah and yeah, I, actually, they have plans for an 18,000 square foot house. So, so you so, basically have effectively like a custom lot if you will, from size, the fact that it's gated already, mm -hmm. right? You don't have to deal with any of that. Yep. And potentially on 23,000, approximately 23,000 square feet, you could put almost 18,000 ish square yeah. foot house. And again, if you want to- On three to, levels. So the opportunity is you could tear down and, and build and there's no lots for sale. So everyone's like, oh, you know, 15, $16 million seems like a lot for buying a lot, but there's no lots for sale. Yeah, yeah. So, no you know, people are gonna name their price. Number yeah. one, number two, if you don't need uh, you know, a massive three, four, 5,000 square foot basement or whatever 18,000 square feet gets you. Not everyone needs that. So here's, let, let's just talk about yeah, from this Let's land. walk and talk yeah. because I'm roasting out here, by yeah, the way. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm the one wearing a jacket, right? <laughs> um, it was cold this morning, I swear. I, so look, right here, you've I'm, got an ability to convert one of these two car garages because you've got a laundry room there and a full bathroom on the other casita guest suite over there. You could easily eliminate this carport. You don't have to have a carport on your property. Most homes don't. So why not extend out and then build your two car garage or convert this from a two to a three car and then make that living space. Uh, remember that other property we saw on Shorewalk actually took this garage space right here yeah. and turned it into a theater. Yeah. Um, and so well, there's- let, let, me, let me back up a little bit and explain because we've been here a thousand times and we understand why you're saying this. This happens to be when you walk in, you turn to the left, this is a detached casita. It's not connected technically to inside of the rest of the property, right? Yeah. So you, so you, well, I mean, it's connected. It by, is technically, it's connected by walls, there's no walkway it, unless you have to go out back through yeah, the front yeah, door again. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. so you have a one huge one bedroom standalone suite mm -hmm. with um, a bathroom hallway, and office, yeah. with, with a I mean, hallway, right? That would very easily and naturally could be made into another entire bedroom suite or if you had like let's say an in-law right yeah you could turn this this could become like a living room maybe a kitchenette and this could be an entire self-contained suite for you know a guest or an in-law or something yeah, like kind that. of like an attached adu yeah and so right? that's why you're saying that the suggestion would be well you could if you give up these two car bays that you could shift and make two new car bays, right? So yeah. you're not gonna lose any parking. I, I think it's important to kind of tell the viewers why this is so important. If we wanted to add a completely detached ADU onto this property, you've got to figure out drainage, sewage, electrical, separate AC condensers. I mean, it's it's a self-contained mini house. Everyone's talking ADU these days, right? But right. This potential ADU opportunity with taking the bedroom that's here in the bathroom, you've already got plumbing, you've got electrical, you're technically attached. There's already air conditioning ducting and it's just gonna be an extension. Yeah. You know, maybe you upgrade the existing condenser, maybe it's got enough power to kind of do that zone, which I'm sure it does, because it's the Casita's got its own condenser already. Yeah. And that's where I'm saying the heavy lifting isn't there. Right. Most people, 
aren't calling us saying, hey, I can't wait to uh, find a house to remodel. They're just like saying, hey, I wanna buy a dream house. But what are people saying? The prices seem a little bit rich right now. This is a way to get into a house and do this I think fairly easy either remodel and minor expansion or enclosing spaces because you're not really breaking the building envelope a lot, right? That's the important part that I think we're trying to get across on this whole thing is that yeah. there's value creation to be made. A lot of people are focusing on, okay, there's 6,300 square feet, it's $2,400 a square foot. Seems kind of like whatever on the upper end of the, but you're not And, and by the way, they, they don't know how to calculate the additional lot. If the average home that we're looking at that's about five to 6,000 square feet has a 10, 12, 13,000 square foot lot, maybe Maybe 14 or 15. This one's over 22,000 square feet. Where do you price that? Well, if you want to add on square footage and you're able to, it's technically priceless because you can't, you know, there's no lots for sale right now in Crystal Cove. The homes that are coming on the market that have all those beautiful white transitional finishes are now having a three in front of it, yeah, right? Yeah. 30 plus million dollars. And this is a great tweener. It's not a small tract home. It's not a big, massive 10, 12,000 square foot custom that, you know, somebody, a seller is going to want 30 million. Someone could come right in, turn it from what is an existing four bedroom. They can make it five bedroom. They could have, take the existing theater. They can have a much bigger theater. They can have an in-law suite. I mean, it's literally, I hate to consider it. Like when we were a kid, we played with Legos, right? Yeah. So this is a simple add on, snap on, snap off compared to like building a complete ADU. I mean, that's, that, I don't know. A client just told me their ADU cost them four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, right. For sure. I mean, I mean, they sell those prefab ones for like two fifty, three hundred thousand. Like, which yeah, I don't yeah, see anyone yeah. in Crystal Cove. Well, doing no, a prefab they're not doing it here. But you know, but it's just also as you were just saying all those things. Sorry, Steve. As you were just saying all those things. Um, yeah, go ahead. What, what, what I was thinking is, if you back up to um, when these were being sold originally, and, and by the way, are we going to pop in there and show that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah okay. Let's. let's, let's but, but what I wanted. Let's to, come on. The point I wanted to hammer it down is that if you would have come here back in 2007 yeah. and went up to the sales office, this premium lot would have been, there would have been a huge premium because it's virtually a corner lot. I mean, it's technically kind, Second of, over. kind of corner, right? But, but, but the view and the privacy make it feel just like a corner lot. But you're, you know, when you go to those and they have the plot map and you're looking and this one has the long gated flagpole, like this would have been a huge premium lot. Yeah, it, it still it, is. It was when it sold, so. when we sold it to the current owner, it was a premium. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's a unique lot. And now that the custom lots are unavailable, right? And there's other, you know, if you will, teardown properties getting sold for 10 or $15 million. This one seems like a deal. This is what we were talking about right here. So you've got a big oversized bedroom. You already have what would be a hallway, which takes you to the existing two car garage on the south side of the property, yeah. but you don't need to have a garage here. This could be walkway or hallway right into your kitchenette and living room. Exactly. And now you've got a full in-laws quarters. If you don't need that, you want another bedroom. Let's say for me, I've got a six and eight year old. My wife might, might turn around and say, hey, I don't want to have the primary suite and one guest suite down here. I want to keep both our kids on the same floor. Right. That's the other my other daughter's bedroom, right? right. And now you've got plumbing from the bathroom, yeah. an easy f format to be able to fill in a garage that's called, let's say, about 400 square feet. Right. So you could even squeeze in maybe in between there, uh, this room and that one, a little, you know, kind of like kids' playroom. A little, little like homework room. Homework lounge. room, right? So again, you can't really do that easily if you have to kind of add on. This is, you're not even taking the roof and extending it unless you're going to have just the garage. Right. Or if you're just happy with a two car garage. I mean, it really gives you endless I mean, opportunities. Two car garage and a motor court for six, six cars. Six yeah. cars, yeah. So. Yeah. And then, you know, if you want to have direct access, you can punch through here. Uh, the house just gives you limitless options. I'm gonna keep on going back to that Lego scenario of, you know, people know that if remodeled homes, if you're breaking roof line, if you're building a detached, um, you know, entity like an ADU, that's pretty extensive. You know, you've gotta, you know, basically cut out all this concrete or whatever you have going on in the backyard, rip things apart just to build that ADU. It's not easy and the approval process is gonna be a lot harder than what's gonna go on here. And that's what we're talking about, building that value. Correct. Yeah, Correct. so let, let's go back and hop over into the foyer. Oh, you know what I wanted to point out, actually? Um, maybe we'll run upstairs, Steve. I was going to point out from out front that right above us right here is that outdoor um, covered loggia off the, off, the, off the bonus room. Yeah. That was another easy, we were going to shoot that, but we'll run around and we'll go up there and see yeah. it. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Which, which way, thanks. Yeah. Which, which way, uh, you want to go this way first? Let's do the kitchen and then we'll do the enclosure. So listen, here's another thing. Over the past, you know, 
let's say since these homes have been built till now, we've seen dozens of homes that are very similar to this, if not the same exact floor plan, with the expansions that we've been talking about. This yeah. isn't us guessing what it would look like. We've seen it with our own eyes. Yeah. So we can advise our clients, hey, this is what the house on Shorewalk did. This is what the other house on Sea Glass did, where it had a billiards room over that what is just covered outdoor space now. Right, exactly. So it's, it's, we're literally giving people the ideas that they maybe don't see on their own to build that instant value and to get the space they want. Because let me tell you, you go on a big view a lot like this, you wanna go buy 8,000 square feet of what will be close to new or newer construction. I mean, it could be low 20s right now, right? Well, you, you just named a street that I remember that property and, and they actually moved their front door to here. Yep. And when you walked in, there was a little seating area and, and they enclosed and this this was all enclosed yeah. yeah so i mean this is a huge play too right because you've got this. a courtyard that you could either leave partially courtyard yeah you could because right now it's kind of open landing with courtyard you could enclose the whole space yeah right and the nice thing too again this is where i think just seeing what other people have done right i mean in our business a lot of people say r d rip off and duplicate because these are homes that other people have gone through the headache with architecture and building and adding on that we've seen what's worked what's nice that you don't realize is right now as we stand in the great room, there's no second floor above you. So if you want to take the ceiling up higher, you want to leave it pitched, you want to flatten it, you want to put you know, 10 foot doors, you want to leave them where they are at eight right now. The, the options are endless. The other house that I saw with you on Shorewalk, which I thought was a great thing they did, was they pushed this whole space out to gain a dining area. Now me, if you want to, break, if you want to go past the overhang here, I would feel that you want to push this whole space out to where the border of the kitchen is. Yeah, I think when we go into the kitchen and you look back this way, now that we're in this room, you get a feel for this. And, you know, again, I mean, you're probably going to have to change at least the roof if you if you push that all the way out because you're not going to have two pitches, right? Yeah, exactly. But, but, but you could, because there's nothing above us, you could do a really tall pitch vaulted ceiling in there right? Absolutely. Like, it would Absolutely. Be, it would be you know, and again, you could leave this courtyard or you could even enclose that space as well. Yeah. Right. So again, you could potentially go, let's say, you know, well that you're only going to pick up about 400 square feet if, in if the garage, you're at, but that's yeah. garage. You're not going to count that. Okay. Yeah. So we're not going to count that. What, I'm if, just if, curious. Why are we not counting that? Well, we don't count garage space in, in uh, Oh, because we did capture it. We're going to convert the garage my, my to living yeah. space. Yeah. So we, we do pick up 400 square feet there. Yeah. And, and then you've already got a big kitchen here. But ima imagine pushing this all out to where maybe you have a little bit less covered like California room and you just enclose all the space where now you've got great room, primary kitchen, kind of like maybe bar area over there and formal dining all in this one big open setting, which that's what everybody wants to stay these days, right? They want to have their communal space is all open yeah. and the bedrooms and kind of ancillary offices or media rooms to kind of have their own separation and privacy. Yeah, I mean, you're picking up what do you, I mean, that's like, uh, it's probably like 40 by, no, I mean, this is at least going to be six, 700 square feet at least. Yeah. I always remember space that a car usually fits in a 190 square foot slot. Yeah. So you can fit three cars. It's around 600 square feet. Yeah. yeah. Um, so again, so you've right got, now you've just added a thousand square feet. Yeah. So you go from 63 to 7,300. So that's you're up to 7,300. Right? And the balcony space upstairs and the foyer is going to be another probably somewhere between six to 800 square feet. You're right at 8,000 square feet right there. You've literally not really changed any of the building envelope except for this one addition right here. And again, if you didn't want to push past the covered area and just re, you know, re pitch the roof here, yeah. you still could stay technically kind of within the envelope with a minor change. Right. You know, we keep on using this word building envelope. I don't want people to get confused with real estate terms. The building envelope is the existing like outline of the structure. Footprint. It's the footprint, yeah. right? So people are always like, I'm gonna do this, add this, add this, and then they kind of get into, well, where's the where's the load or weight or engineering have to be changed and how much heavy lifting is that? And a lot of people tell us, oh, you know what? I didn't even want to do that addition because it was going to just take too much time and money. So there's that. And then there's also people, you know, we've heard clients that will be like, oh, I'll just push this whole thing all the way out there. But you got to worry about the setback. Yeah. Setback requirements are different, on, you know, basically on each lot, right? The yeah, so absolutely. That, yeah. Uh, you had a great idea on this particular property um, and, you know, uh, with taking the existing barbecue kind of outdoor kitchen and making it one of more of those modernized outdoor bars with like TVs and like more of a California room. Yeah, like a pool room bar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You could enclose it. That would be one of those spaces where 
If you wanted to enclose it, you're gonna need air conditioning, you're gonna need, it's, it's gonna be more like that ADU project, heavier lifting, but if you wanna just leave it as an open air kind of, you know, cabana, if you will, I think that's gonna be less heavy lifting. But, you know, realistically, I mean, I, I appreciate because you just went through a super painful remodel. So that's yeah. why that's why you think this I've way. got the scar tissue but fresh I, in the you mind. know, my old banker mind is thinking, okay, even if it's heavy lifting, the ROI to me, you know, if you pick up another 400 square feet, let's say it costs you a thousand bucks, go crazy, a thousand dollars a square foot. To, which, to, which it wouldn't. It would yeah. not. But, yeah. you know, the return at $2,500 a square foot in the future market value Absolutely. is two, two and a half well, times then, on well your money. The other thing this house has is an incredible distance between the actual house and the neighboring property. Yeah. So, you, you know, these homeowners, they were actually gonna put a whole prep kitchen behind this kitchen wall yeah, over you here. Can push out, yeah. Like, you know, with one of these cutouts being an entryway, with right. a whole prep kitchen running kind of the same distance as the actual kitchen, yep. where that's where you get a lot of the cooking done. And this is more like where you put out your appetizers and this is like your showcase kitchen. Yeah, this is where everyone like, you know, kind of hangs out. Absolutely, you know, everyone, absolutely. Everyone gathers here and all everything's the, out the, in the back. The last thing is, you, if you're gonna spend all this time, money and energy, you wanna do it on a lot that has a great view. Mm -hmm. We love this view because it's got virtually maybe one rooftop in your eye line. I mean, right? they're, they're way out and way down. Yeah, they're, they're not they're not the rooftops like when you're up at the top where they're kind of like no. in, in your view. Yeah. You're really close to the water. You could see the water glistening. You could see the color variations of the blues. And even when you can't see Catalina, it still is a really picturesque view. And the privacy is unparalleled. Yeah. Privacy is such a personal thing. Some people really have to have it. Some people are kind of open to it. They don't mind other homes looking into their backyard. Me personally, I love having a house where I can go in the yard and there isn't like second story homes looking into my backyard. Are you running around naked out there or what? I, I absolutely <laughs> I absolutely am not. But you know, listen, we talk all day long for work. When I go home, I'm not saying I'm antisocial, but yeah. I only want to see the people no, yeah. that are part of the family what, or get invited. What was it, uh, Tim, the builder, whatever? Remember the guy that used to stick his head over the- <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Tool time? Tool, Tool time, time yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a throwback. So, so wait, before this becomes way too long, because we were really talking about value. Yeah, everyone should we go know, upstairs? Everyone knows the view. No, I want to. I want to drive home the price, like the, the concept. And okay. we're talking gross sales price again, because a lot of people are like, "Oh, well, the price per square foot." So look, listen, we're listed. We're listed at fifteen nine nine five. Let's say you pick this up in the fifteens. Let's just say at. Let's just round it up to sixteen. Okay. Yeah. Let's just say at sixteen million. Yeah. Okay. You're getting sixty three hundred square feet on a twenty, almost twenty three thousand square foot lot. We we do all of these value capture, value add propositions. Yeah. Let's say you and spend, we're at let's say you 80, spend 300 square feet. If we, yeah. if we pick up 2,000 yeah. square feet. Yep. And let, we let's say it's a thousand a square foot just for argument. I mean, it's not gonna be, but let's say it is, let's say it is a thousand a square okay, foot. Let's say you're two million, million into it. Okay. How long does it take you based on, you know, we're not making any guarantees because it depends on how quickly the- I mean, you, I'm, you I'm, I'm saying things. 12-ish months. Okay. What so do you let, think? Maybe 14? I think, you know- You gotta you, give yourself a buffer. So let's say it's somewhere between, I would say 12 to 14 months. Okay, right? so we're, we agree, 12 to 14 months, let's say ballpark, two million bucks. Yep. So now you're into it for about 18, not not counting carry costs and stuff like that. Yep. Okay, just gross gross yeah. numbers. So now, so now you're and in you 18. 8,300 uh, square feet. Let's bring out the old trusty calculator. I mean, I, I, think, I think you're pushing, easily starts with a two. So let's see here. So you're in at 2,168 a square foot. Uh, let's call it right under 2,200. You have 8,300 square feet on a private ocean view lot that's over half an acre. And that would probably end up being closer to $3,000 a square foot. Well, just, just punch it in at, uh, you know, like 2,650, just as a conservative. You're at 22 million. Okay. So, so you pick up, so you get 4 million of value. None, none of the stuff we're talking about is like the quick flip, make money kind of concept. This is someone who wants to create that perfect, because look, unless you build it yourself, no home's perfect. No. I've and never even, gone into- And even if you, how many times have we seen someone build it <laughs> yeah. and then end up saying like, I wish I did things differently because by the time I started, four years of my life went flashed by Th my things change. eyes. Things change. And I, I would have moved the powder room differently. I would have done different stone. What I wanted at the time, we're hearing this a lot right now. People are like, gosh, you know, I didn't have that material available to me. So I picked right. something I didn't love. But my point is, I'm totally in agreement with you. Nobody's saying like you're gonna buy in one of the highest demand areas, which is Crystal Cove, and you're gonna steal a property. There's too many sharks out in the water that right. want the same chum, right. right? The same bait. And the reality is you've got to think outside the box and build value. And that's the difference with working with someone who knows 
what to buy, how to give you the right advice, how to manage kind of your concept of a remodel, and then tell you what other people have done so you can see what's possible and not possible. And help with all the right trades, subs, yeah. GC, architects, architects GC, everyone. We, we know everyone in town. Yeah, you don't have to use everybody local, but we see where it makes a difference, where a local architect that knows how to deal with the homeowners well, association. Here, yeah, it's right? all the difference. Yeah, there's, there's one, two, three guys here that do most of the stuff. Who you know are either on the board on the design board or know how to and, deal with you them. know know how to go yeah. get stuff done over counter or whatever. But I mean, look, I mean, I would love to to buy a house that checked most of the boxes and create the house that I want, my dream house, and create four million dollars in equity. Yeah, like, but, like you know, that. I, I thought of something else too. We just had a client of ours purchase a property. <clears throat> excuse me, in Corona Del Mar. It's a straight teardown. He can't even rent it out. So he's parked a ton of money into a property that really is a teardown. He can't even really rent it out. He can't subsidize any of the carry costs. And this is a house that not only can you live in, you can enjoy it. And if it takes you six months or a year to plan, right, this, this expansion of this 2,000 extra square feet, mm -hmm. you can live in it, enjoy the, enjoy the heck out of this house. Mm -hmm. I would love to live here. I mean, just That's the breeze house. right now is just yeah. making me the, the resort Hawaii vibes. Right. And you're still getting the best location on a premium lot. And then maybe things calm down a little bit with construction and maybe that thousand a square foot, you get it back down to maybe seven, 800 a square foot and sharpen the pencil a bit and you've got better people to choose from because people aren't as slammed and you're still enjoying the house the whole time. Some of these other properties that are, I hate to use the word uninhabitable, they wouldn't live in them, right? The one right. we just walked right now, the off market that we just saw, how many of our clients would be like, uh, I'm not staying one night in here. Would our wives live there? No, no, <laughs> I mean, definitely not yours, my <laughs> sister. Um, yeah. But my point is, this is totally for many people move in ready, but here's the, here's I mean, the I, I, literally I can move in. I, I would be ecstatic to, to live in this house. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. look, if you want to pop a countertop on and, and, you know, change the backsplash, you're talking about That's a weekend like, project. I was going to say it's a, it's a weekend two you know, two weeks maximum, but, uh, all the fundamentals are here. I, I forget how many sets of, uh, French doors there are. Is it like, 12, there's a, I mean, everywhere you look, there's French doors, so the there, whole house is yeah. already open. There is uh, there is 12 sets of French doors. Yeah. I, I wanna keep on kind of saying a point that you brought up earlier. We're getting a lot of clients that are telling their agents, hey, I saw this house online, you know, everyone's looking, they're calling their agents and saying, hey, I see that the price per square foot's this, I see that the specs on it are this, and they literally see like in two dimensional viewpoint yeah. that it's just what's in front of me. Whereas they don't have the ideas or the concept to even do these things. And maybe you don't need to add 80, you know, take it to 8,300. Maybe it's literally just enclose the upper space, enclose or the just space, this, yeah. and do a little facelift yeah. on it, right? Yeah. The house gives you so many options and they're, you kind of have it, that's the building, the value without seeing, we're helping people see in like 3D, not yeah. 2D, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah. I think I and, think that's the that, opportunity. That uh, like, do we, want, do we want to run Steve up just to the balcony space or are we kind of no, killing you know, people you know, on time? We can actually, Steve, if you pop through the courtyard, um, we don't need to go all the way up there. We can just kind of point to it from here. Oh, that's it, a great idea. Yeah, it gives you a good idea. I mean, so right, right to the left is a bonus room. It's a full, you know, nice size lounge bonus room. And then that, that whole area, there is a fireplace up there, which could just be deleted. And then you could capture that entire upper deck area, right? You could just extend the I roof mean, over. Yeah, you could keep it where the roof line is and then keep that as like your livable enclosed space. You could extend the roof, cover it all and yeah. make it all enclosed. If you were gonna go on a budget, yeah. like, right? Then you're right. Just, just enclose it to where the current roof exists and you'd have a, maybe a French door there or a door, and yeah, that and, would be your out, you would and, keep and you, an outdoor. And then flip the fireplace opening to the other side because you already have it, a chimney and a flute there, yeah, yeah. right? So then that's your outdoor fireplace upstairs because you've got killer ocean views from up there you too. You do, you do, that's great. I, yeah. I love it, I mean, I would do that a thousand percent. Yeah, know? I mean, I, I think people that come in with like the wrong mentality of like, I'm literally buying what this is today. I mean, no matter what you buy today, you're not gonna get exactly what you want. There's not enough inventory. Right. And that's not changing. I mean, people are saying the market's gonna crash, the market's gonna crash. It's not crashing here. Well, the new, somewhere it might, but not here. I, I mean, listen, uh, in these areas, more inland, you're seeing price depreciation because there's a lot more listings, there's a lot more choices. There's or, really only- deceleration, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, realistically, that's what you're seeing, deceleration of appreciation. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, you're gonna be super safe in Crystal Cove as far as parking your money here as an investment basis for lifestyle and kind of what you get out of the neighborhood. It's obviously what we would consider for this size of a community, the most in-demand community in all of Orange County, especially yeah. coastal Orange County. Yeah. And you know, there's homes that start now, 
you know, we saw that non-view come on in Sydney Bay in the fives and it goes all the way, the highest price home in here for sale right now is 69 million. Mm -hmm. So it's got a big range of homes, prices and sizes. This is a great tweener in between track and full custom and you could make it feel like a custom. And one thing, again, when you walk onto the front of the lot, all the way to the back, the privacy, the views. I mean, you really feel like you're in a resort. This is one of those homes that makes you feel like you're on vacation. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, you know what? People need to reach out to us because we get creative. We know this space inside and out can help them literally create value. Yeah, and if, and if, look, we'd love to sell you this house. If this house isn't the right one or you have questions about even your own existing property, people DM and text us all the time and say, hey, listen, I'm not a seller today but I wanna do a remodel, give me your two cents. And we're like, hey, look, absolutely. We'd rather tell you what's gonna make it easier to sell, whether you sell it next year or 20 years from now, you wanna do the right finishes that are gonna be kind of timeless and on trend. Yeah. We can help out with that too. We're a, a, literally a DM and a text away or a phone call if anyone makes calls anymore. As we say, concierge service. All right. All right, man. Thanks, man. All right.